Hello, you are here with Miss Paula and the Cha-Ching Show. And today we are discussing the difference between branding, marketing, and sales. All three of these are needed for a business to thrive. Each are different, but have high value. If properly and thoughtfully executed through a strategic plan, the sky is the limit. Let's start with branding. Branding is at the core of the marketing strategy. It defines who you are as a company. Branding is the long game. Examples would be the Tequila Me Please segment on the Cha-Ching Show. I made sure to include it. I love tequila. I wanted to make sure that it was a part of the Miss Paula brand. And the Miss Paula brand is representative in the Cha-Ching Show brand. It is also uh, the personality of the product or the service. It's super intentional because it gives identity uh, to your company and your products. Let's explore companies that does an amazing job with branding. But before we explore this next company, I need for you to understand that a good brand strategy will connect with the needs and emotions of the customer, plus be able to compete in the market. So now this company that we're gonna uh, discuss here, we all know this company, it is Nike. Yes, the Nike brand. As we know the slogan, just do it. Before I even begin, I want to give you what the net worth of this company is. $151 billion, whopping. So, what's included in a brand? You're gonna see things like the logo, right? The font the colors, the language, the slogan, just do it. The just do it slogan connects with the audience to jump any hurdles, whatever it is that they're facing. The brand also uses storytelling very effectively, focusing not only on the products, but on stories that the audience can connect to. Nike does that very well. In 1993, they did that with the Charles Barkley commercial, and it was named I Am Not a Role Model. They also did it in 2006 with Kobe Bryant, and that was the Love Me or Hate Me ad. Let's go check that out. It is very, very important that we study companies like Nike. Nike does this very, very well. They have had strong, strong uh, brand presence, not only in the United States, they have a global strategy that works for them over so many decades. I encourage you as a small company to look at them, look at what they did and see how you can do it even better. I wanna give some notable mentions to some companies that are doing branding phenomenally. We have Ben & Jerry's, they concentrate on brand values. Then we have Starbucks, they concentrate on personalization. Chipotle concentrates on positioning, meaning uh, they sell themselves as being a healthier brand than, let's say, a Taco Bell. They all do that very well. Now we're going to move on to marketing. Oh, my baby, I love marketing. I love marketing. Um, marketing is at the center of everything, whether we know it or not, whether we understand why we're buying products, why we like the products that we do buy, marketing is at the center of it. Once the branding has a strategy that can be executed, now it's time to dive into the marketing. Marketing, I need for you to understand, is a tool to deliver that message about the brand to the customer. I always describe it in my coaching sessions that marketing is this. This is your product and this is your customer and you need a car. You need some type of transportation to get the brand over to the actual customer. So you use marketing in order to be able to do that. So always remember, marketing, unlike branding, marketing is a tool. Marketing also, unlike branding, um, evolves, right, over time, just as the products and services will evolve over time. Marketing supports the core values of the brand. So again, I started with branding, and as I stated to you, without branding, you cannot have marketing, and this is why. Marketing has to support those core values of the brand, or the message is missed. Um, you have content marketing, we have online marketing, we have offline marketing, social media marketing, SEO marketing. It's, marketing is this like huge umbrella and you get to pick these pieces as you need them depending on what type of campaigns you are, are doing. So let's discuss some companies that are doing some really, really good marketing. Geico. Oh my goodness, Geico. We all know Geico. I think one of the first, right after New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance, um, the next company I got was, was Geico. And it was literally, as I think about it, 
it wasn't because I really did like hardcore research. It was because they were everywhere. You know, they were everywhere. Um, I believe at that time when I did some comparisons about pricing, they came up to be pretty comparable. So I went with them, but I definitely know it was because the branding and the marketing was there for them. Uh, Geico is valued at $32 billion. Notice when we are speaking about these companies, these companies did not come to play small. Um, with marketing um, in Geico, they are widely recognized insurance brand in the world. The gecko, I think we all remember the little gecko. They used the caveman and the little piggy. These were all different campaigns that they used to drive that product to us. They've used all of these to capture our hearts, engagement, and attention. We're going to move on to another company, McDonald's. We all know McDonald's. McDonald's is um, king in marketing. I want you to understand that they are valued at $205 billion. In 2020, I don't know if you remember, but I do. Uh, I have I have kids, right? And uh, at this time, my son might have been like nine or ten years old. They came out with the Travis Scott meal. This meal um, was marketed so well; it was uh, it was sold out uh, in a lot of the different locations because the anticipation was there about it. They used the marketing to really drive customers into the stores. In 2007, um, they had a different campaign where they featured a kid dancing and this kid was approached by Ellen DeGeneres and Jay Leno. I want you to see something inside of this also. A kid dancing and they used Ellen DeGeneres. If you've ever watched her show, what does Ellen do? She dances. So they were very, very strategic about the way that they put that ad forward. Um, these are companies that are doing it very, very well. I believe that if you look at some of these ads that they've had, um, if you go online and research it, you can see a plethora of different ads that they've had throughout the years. And you're going to be able to pick up little things, little pieces, ideas that you'd be able to use for your small business. I want to give some shout outs to some companies who are doing marketing very, very well. Chipotle. Chipotle is killing the game with mobile marketing. They have a rewards program through mobile marketing and they are actually doing it. Uh, Red Bull is the next one. Red Bull is using visual marketing to enhance their brand strategy. They are selling go-getter. They are selling adrenaline and they are selling adrenaline seekers. And now we're at sales. I told you that branding helps the audience to know who you are and marketing helps to attract people to the business. But sales takes both of those and turns it into money. Sales is all about numbers. Sales is short term. I told you that branding was the long game, but sales is the short game. It has a definitive start and it has a definitive end. Sales cannot be successful if the branding has not been done correctly and if the marketing has not been done correctly. Developing a sales strategy process, these are the three things that you need to do. You need to identify the leads, the leads that you would have gotten from effective marketing. Then you need to engage those leads. Last, we turn those leads into money made. I want to give you some tips on how to build a sales strategy. Number one, set specific goals. That means keep your eye on the target. You need to understand. Goal is, I want to make an extra $500 this month. That's the target. Keep your eye on it. The next one, analyze your past sales. It's going to help you to identify where you've been strong um, in areas, but also where you've been weak. And we already know where you've been weak is where you're going to work at, and where you've been strong at is where you can throw some money at. Start small, find one audience, one demographic to concentrate on. Starting small allows you uh, to be able to build um, in a more effective manner. Number four, understand your customer needs so that you can solve a problem. If you're not solving a problem, you're not gonna be making money for long, right? Um, we need toilet tissue. Somebody solved that problem. So I don't care what type of recession we are in, people are buying toilet tissue. VOC, voice of customer. Listen to your customer, uh, understanding what they want and being able to dive in and give them that. And last is storytelling. Storytelling is so important, as I explained with Nike, because it's going to allow your audience to be able to connect with you by telling stories of, about the product uh, or through the product or through the brand. It allows an audience to say, hey, 
I know somebody like that or I am that somebody and be able to connect with uh, you on an emotional level. And if I've ever discussed it with you, emotional marketing is to me, just for me, the best marketing that you could ever have. And we are now ready for the hot or not segment of the show. I am really, really pleased about uh, bringing to you all this product. And I don't know why I haven't brought it to you sooner because I do not live without it. I actually buy two at a time because I refuse to ever go without it. It is bio oil. I use uh, bio oil head to toe. Um, I don't generally put it on my face, um, but you can, I have. Bio oil, what I find, um, unlike other oils, some oils, you know, um, moisturize your skin, but maybe in about an hour, your back ashy, uh, doesn't penetrate well, not bio oil. Bio oil um, is, is amazing. I use it on my scars um, and it helps heal uh, wounds and scars in a way that is satisfactory, above satisfactory uh, to me. It has an amazing aroma, smells really fresh like you just got out the shower. Um, I want to tell you what's in it. It has mineral oil, lavender oil, uh, rosemary oil, plus more. And if you know anything about uh, products like rosemary oil, very good for the skin. Very, very good for the skin. Um, I've used uh, rosemary oil from my other company, Candy Flavors, inside of our butters, or inside of the sugar scrubs for that very reason. So this week, I want to share this with you, um, probably in a different way than I've shared other products, because this is a staple in my home. This this is um, something uh, my youngest son has sensitive skin. I buy it for him. I buy it for myself. I cannot be without it. I don't think you should either. I have to give this a big hot. Yes. The next product, um, and this is going to be a little fun because I want to do a little comparison for you. It's the Chanel brand of perfumes, right? So we have um, Chanel number no. five which is the classic, right? That's the, the old classic, you know, Miss Classy herself. And then we have um, the Coco Chanel. And I wanted to do a comparison um, today. Um, and it's not that it's a not for me. It, they're both a hot, but I'm gonna tell you the difference. I am going to a meeting and I wanna seal the deal. I'm sitting across the table from big players and I need them to understand that I'm a big player too. I'm going out um, on a date. I'm feeling good. I'm looking good. I want the person across from the uh, table to understand that. Also to feel my energy. Also to know that I'm sexy without even, you know, my, myself even having to project it. They're both hot in their own right. Um, I use them um, for different purposes, as I just explained, uh, put me in a different mood and I'm looking to put the person across from me in, in a certain type of mood by wearing them. The Chanel brand, whether it's um, Coco, whether it's number five, whether it's Mademoiselle, whether it's Chance, you can't miss with the Chanel brand. You better go out and get you some Chanel perfume. Change your life. I have to get this a hot. Thank you, yes. And we are now ready for the Tequila Me Baby segment. So who are we featuring this week? Hmm, let's see. El Telquino. As you know, I love TikTok. I love Instagram for uh, influencer marketing purposes. I'm always looking at what the latest products are, um, what's hot. And this came up in a video. It stated that if you are drinking Casamigos, you need to stop and drink El Tequino. So let's explore it. Uh, birthed in 1959 by Don George Celes Cuervo. In 2000, he died, but his family takes over the business. In 2019, Casa Celes Hotel Boutique opens at the site of the distillery, which is in Jalisco, Mexico. It is 100% estate grown agave from highlands of Jalisco. Its mineral rich soil produces agave with a higher sugar content. It sits in American oaks for a minimum of 14 days before it is bottled has a slightly spicy flavor and the aromas are cooked agave anise 
and black pepper. And noted, it stated that it makes a great margarita. The girl loves a good margarita. But for right now, we're gonna taste it. Again, they said that it's very spicy. So let's see. Let's give this a taste test. Mm -hmm. I like it. Let me tell you, I actually put a little bit of lime juice um, at the bottom. When I, when I read, you know, that it was spicy, I said, let me put a little lime juice because I didn't want to choke out on the camera. This is really, really good. I really like this. Um, with the lime juice, it was very smooth, but it also gave it like a, a nice little kick. Every now and again, I like to have a, like a jalapeno margarita, and this put me right in the in, in, in that space. So I could see why it stated that um, it would make a great margarita. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. I'll be having more this evening. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you with the cha-ching love words. It is so imperative that um, we are constantly looking at the big brands. What are they doing? How are they doing it? How are they being successful at it? And I think a lot of times as entrepreneurs, especially as smaller entrepreneurs, we're really concerned that I'm not that big. Um, I, I could never do that, but you can. It's not about so much uh, what they're doing, but how they're doing it. It's not looking at the dollar amount that they may be spending on making a commercial happen, but being able to invest in yourself. And I do, you know what? I wanna draw you guys in and really have a, a, a real conversation about this part. Every piece of what I spoke about today is going to require an investment. And I wanna be honest with you, that if you are not at the point in your entrepreneurial career where you are ready to invest, I want you to pack it up and stop wasting your time because you have to. It's going to take money to invest and make that brand pop. You're gonna to have to pay somebody to, to do the logo. You're gonna to have to, and, and you might have to pay them more than once because it might not come out the way you want it to come out. And then once you get the branding and who you are down packed, you're then going to have to look at the marketing. That's definitely going to cost money. Are you spending millions of dollars on a Nike ad? No. But you do know someone that's a videographer that could probably shoot you a really great commercial. We are in a digital age where everything is visual. I don't know how you're going to do it if you're not willing um, to do those things. And then if you're not willing to invest in the branding and the marketing, we already know what happens with the sales. So I'm here to tell you that, yeah, as I do every week, you can do it. You have, you have everything you need within you already to make it happen. It is so important that you discover who you are as a brand, that you then take that discovery and dump it into marketing so that we can know who you are and then put those two pieces together so you can go out and make money. Cha-ching, baby.